five practices. Uh, what would you say your overall assessment of the three scholarship quarterbacks is? I've, I'm, I'm excited about where, where they're at. Um, I think Coach Rule's done a fantastic job with uh, the implementation, implementation of reps, you know, as you guys are hearing about, you know, kind of our spring league, if you will. You know, we're pushing, you know, 100 and – 100 plus reps, 150 reps for those guys in five practices. So it's been fantastic in that way. And, you know, we kind of talked about last time is how do you get to be a better player as you play? So they're getting a ton of reps. They're getting a lot of uh, variables. You know, Tony does a great job on defense with, you know, all the variables that he gives us. So each day we're learning a little bit. Uh, you know, an installation sometimes meets the installation, right? Meaning, you know, we're running a play that might not necessarily be ideal versus a look, but I think it's great for the quarterback in the fact that you really have to play your rules. You know, what are they giving us and how do I respond if it isn't necessarily the ideal look? How have you seen those, the young guys in particular, respond to those situations? I think positive, and, and for, for the simple fact, I think they're coachable and they're open to be to learning. I think that's, you know, the, the first step of getting better, you know? Um, like I say, we, you know, defensively, we're, we don't necessarily a, a universal defense. There's a lot of different exotic looks, so it's not necessarily your traditional uh, windows a lot of the time. So, but I've, I've been excited about their coachability and their application from the meeting to the to the field, you know, and then the retention, right? The retention piece is is the next element as far as you know what are we talking about as far as those corrections and are they getting those done on the practice field? There's a test for an 18 year old to lead some guys who are four or five years older. How do you see him do it, doing early on with that component? Yeah, I think I think I'm, I'm I'm in a good place with it. You know, and like we talked about last time, I think it's just the expectation of being successful when you're out there. You know, having the confidence of putting that work in the meeting room, and then once you step out there, you know what you're doing. You can react and and process it. You know, in an ideal, uh, timely fashion, and make a play. What's your early impression of, of working with Heinrich and maybe some things in particular uh, he's looking to improve on? Uh, I think it's I think the passing piece, right? We've talked about the completion percentage and trying to get that up. We talked about mechanics and elbow and arm angles and, and those type things. Those are constant, you know, things we're talking about. And then again, the application from the meeting room corrections to the field, I think, has been good. Um, again, we're trying to continue to work through the concise decision making as far as when I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be. And I, I think we're in a good place like that. And again, we're getting better and better, hopefully each and every day. There's obviously a lot of noise surrounding the quarterback room. How have you seen them kind of handle all of that outside? Of the I've been pleased with the room. I think it's a fantastic room in the fact that they're uh, very cohesive. They're working together. Um, they're talking through different scenarios. Um, hey, this is what I saw here. This is what I saw here. What do you think about this? Um, I love the fact they're asking questions. You know, sometimes you set, you know, set in a room and you don't want to be the guy that's asking a question. I think they're asking a question which stimulates more conversation for other people that they might have that same question that they didn't ask. So all those things I think are positive and helps the room build. With, with Dylan, what kind of traits have you seen in him that come naturally that, you know, aren't necessarily things that you can coach a guy to do? Well, he's got nat he's a natural passer, as is Danny. They're both natural passers. They got great rotation as far as upper body. They use their lower lower half really good, which creates some arm strength. Comes off their hand, they throw a really catchable ball, which I think it goes you know underappreciated sometimes. Um, I love the fact that both of them again they're creating that application from the meeting room to the classroom and really being coachable to to getting better each day. How are the three teams that set up with each of them leading, especially the two of them, but they're all young, but how have you seen that maybe benefit them in a way? Because they're not only getting all those reps, but they're kind of having to then also lead those groups very quickly. No question. I, and I think that's part of the strategy as far as creating that leadership uh, mentality. Uh, you know, guys that don't necessarily work with or have, you know, experience with, that they have that social dynamic. You know, when f things are going good, they're celebrating together. When things are, are low, you know, you might have to pick them up. So I think having that dynamic with people that you aren't working with necessarily on a down-in, down-out basis, I think is a positive, and it's, it's shown to be a, a good thing for the first, you know, week and a half. You have a guy that was a starter last year in Harburg. Um, do you talk to him just a little bit differently? Because it, it, it's pretty clear he's again in a quarterback competition, even though he kind of earned the starting job. What, what do you say to him about staying motivated um, despite being in a competition with two players who've never taken a college snap? 
Well, I, he's self-motivated. I, th I think that's a that's an attribute of all those guys. He's self-motivated. I don't think I have to motivate him. He wants to be good. He wants to continue to improve. So uh, I respect that out of him. I, I, uh, you know, we ask questions all the time. He he gives me feedback on maybe his thoughts last year, why this happened, why that happened. Uh, so that's been nice perspective that way. But he's definitely a, a self-starter, self-motivated, and he's the one pushing himself to get better for sure. The other question about the two young quarterbacks. So both of them were elite 11, and I, that probably doesn't mean much to you, but they were, you know, considered among the best in the country. When you get guys and then you, the first time you have to tell them, maybe there's something that you do that you need to improve. How does that conversation go? Like, how do, how do you, how do you communicate with somebody who's been told for years that they're great? Actually, you need to fix something. Um, I think it. I think it's a natural course. I mean, obviously, when you start practicing and you understand the speed of the game and how you know the unique defenses and how to to attack a defense, I think that in itself will take a step back and be like, hey, how is the best way to do this? Um, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to be around some guys in my past that have, you know, I've coached a certain different way. I think we can utilize those you know, past cut-ups or this technique or this thought process as far as a read. So I think there's a variety of things that you can use to show them that this is the best way. And then that being said, there's no ego involved. If something they like better or, hey, I feel more comfortable with this as a coach, shame on me if I'm not listening to that. So I think that dynamic, that, that conversation is, is ongoing. And whatever the best technique, process, progression there is, let's do it. Is it too early? to start looking for someone to separate themselves five practices in, or, or are you looking for that? Not looking for that at all. Each time you step on the field, we're expecting you to, edu uh, to, to execute, and I think that's the perspective uh, going in, and, and we're no rush for that. I think the, the process of getting reps is the emphasis, and, and we're getting that accomplished right now. Glenn, how about for you, five practices in, just being back in the college game and being here and coaching these quarterbacks? How has it been? It's been great. It's really it's been great. You know, you love the energy, the enthusiasm, the you know, uh, it, you know, bouncing from play to play. We're not getting enough plays. Hurry up, hurry up. You know, do this, do that. Uh, it's been fantastic. And you know, each day you come in the building, the energy that those guys bring to you, and you try to bring to them. You know, it makes coming to work every day. You know, a lot of fun. How does that change your approach knowing, you know, you were working with professionals, now you work with college kids. Do you feel like they're more like sponges, they can soak in information more? Where pros are kind of a back and forth dialogue? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe in some ways, but at the end of the day, even at that level, they're looking for information to be better. You know, I think at the end of the day, in a meeting, you, the more information that you can give them to be a better player, they're receptive to that. So, uh, you know, it might be a little different information that you're given, um, but for the most part, it's a similar dynamic. Uh, as far as the information, receiving of information, I would say. Are the expectations that you have as far as leadership in the locker room, away from the field, um, you know, encouraging teammates to come out to, to throw, watch film, are they the same for a young quarterback that you would have for a guy who's a junior or senior in your program? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I, I think it's the same from their perspective, too, which is more exciting. You know, a lot of times those are the guys that are taking the leadership, even as the young quarterbacks, like we're talking about, they're taking the ownership of getting some extra throws. You know, it's not something that I'm, you know, uh, talking about so much as opposed to them initiating that you know, situation and getting some extra work with them. So that's an exciting, you know, environment when you have the young guys really pushing everybody to be better. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.